Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Hannah Crapo, and I'm the Content Marketing Manager at Certiport. We're so happy to have you join us for our first CAD Academy webinar today. Please note that the session will be recorded, so we ask that all attendees verify that their microphones are muted throughout the presentation. And we'll have a Q&A at the end of our session today, but you're more than welcome to drop the questions through our Q&A feature or the chat as we go throughout our discussion um, so that our experts can answer those as we go throughout our discussion today. Um, and today we'll be tackling the topic of our Autodesk Certified User Learning Partners. And we'll be learning from Mark Japanin and Ron Swingle. Mark will be showing us the ins and outs of Teach Me 3D. And Ron will be showing us a little bit more about CAD learning. We're so privileged to have these two join us. But before we dive into our platforms and all of our questions, I wanted to give both of you a chance to introduce yourselves. So Mark, we'll go ahead and start with you. All right, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Mark Japanin. I teach at Oconomowoc High School in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, which is kind of down near Milwaukee. Uh, I've been teaching technology education since 97 here at Oconomowoc and um, been using Inventor uh, since 2004 and then the Teach Me 3D stuff since its inception. So I'm um, glad to be here with everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Ron, do you want to go ahead and turn on your camera and introduce yourself to the group? Ron, I think you're still muted. There, there we go. go. <laughs> that works. Um, I'm Ron Swingle. I teach at Berwick Area High School. It's in northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, I switched. I was teaching Adobe products when I switched to the new school, which would be this is my fifth year. Um, that's when I started using CAD learning, and now we're using all Autodesk products. So. Um, it's new. I'm, I'm still tip of the iceberg with a lot of things. Um, so I relate to a lot of the new teachers, even though I've been teaching for 20 years now. So hopefully we can expand on some, some problems. Awesome. Well, we're so happy to have both of you join us. Mark, I'll go ahead and start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about how you use Teach Me 3D to engage your students while they're learning from home? Yeah, um, this has been like a godsend, uh, really. So I've been using Teach Me 3D, you know, since before the pandemic and everything in different ways. Um, well, last spring, you know, we were shut down totally since March. And this uh, fall, our school district started out at a 50-50 ratio. So I had half my kids one day, the other half the next day, and they just flip flop back and forth. And right now, in fact, we're shut down again for two weeks, uh, total virtual because of just some, you know, increase in some quarantine kids and that kind of stuff. So it's been great. Um, what I can do with the Teach Me 3D website is assign uh, one of the lessons. They can watch the videos uh, at their leisure, you know, at home. Um, there's a demonstration video that walks them through like the ins and outs of what they just learned through the lecture video. And then they might do like a project or an assignment uh, using the software. And then there's also a workbook that they can, you know, fill out uh, a worksheet and, you know, turn that stuff in. So it's been great. You know, I, I don't have to create anything. It's just literally just assigning them this lesson and they go from there. Awesome. Mark, if you could, would you be able to pull up your Teach Me 3D account so our teachers can see a little bit about what that looks like? Sure. So um, this is the just the starting page. It's fantastic. It's not just Inventor. Um, they're developing, you know, Autodesk Fusion. There's Revit on here currently, and I know like in the future there's plans for more and more programs um, that students can use. What's great is um, as I log in here, I've been assigned uh, a school number. And so over on the left-hand side, uh, what I'll have the students do either at the beginning of the year, beginning of the class, whatever, um, they'll type in my email address with our school PIN number. Once they do that, then they you know, fill out some demographic information and essentially create an account for themselves. Oh, 
Okay, so um, we've just purchased the inventor um, items and uh, Revit items. There is a middle school level, obviously, here. Um, our middle schools currently use it uh, quite a bit. Uh, I see in the chat window here is Teach Me 3D Chromebook compatible. It's a very popular question right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. So the videos and everything, yes, it's compatible, but um, Autodesk Inventor and Revit does not run on a Chromebook. So we're doing some things at school here where they can access remotely the desktops in my classroom so they can still do the activities. But last spring, when we were totally shut down, we didn't have this remote desktop um, set up. So I just had the kids watch the videos and then fill out the worksheets and that worked pretty well as well. Did you still have your students testing and taking the certification after just going through that level of just the videos and the assignments? Not last spring, okay. just because of the craziness of, of the everything. Lockdown. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And I personally wasn't sure on how to administer the test because, you know, I had my IT folks here at school set yep. it up on our desktops. The plan is, though, no matter what, this year for them to take the certification test. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, they're always developing more stuff in this software or this program. So I'll go into Inventor 2018. What's really nice is we're currently using Inventor 2021, but all of these lessons are pretty darn close to, um, you know, what we use in 2021. So they're still very good. And like I said, they're constantly kind of updating this stuff. Um, so it's really kind of cool. Um, he's broken this up into chapters. I'll just click on one of them here. So the idea, I'll go into a lesson. And there it is. Okay, so the idea is that students would watch a lecture video and fill out uh, like a worksheet if you want to assign them that. Then there is usually a demonstration video that kind of walks them through through step by step how to manipulate a file, how to put something together. And then the workbook kind of like sends them off on their own and they'll say like, okay, complete this task now completely on your own. And so the kids then would, you know, uh, last year they would use, uh, for me, Google Classroom to submit their work. Now we're using Canvas, but still they would just submit their work through Canvas that way. Um, and with a, like the really nice thing is I would teach Inventor the same exact way. So it's almost like seamless for students hearing stuff from me and then going to the videos, they would still get like a reinforcement maybe, or if they're absent, they could just basically almost get the same information. And uh, let me just, the last thing. Yeah, go ahead. And the, there's a teacher resource. So you can download um, a workbook. There's an answer key that goes along with it. There are some pre-made files that the students can download. And um, I'm, I'm not gonna show you the page just cause I have some student names on there, but I can see which students are have an account and how much time they've spent on there. So you can really get a sense of are they really engaging with the, the program. Perfect, that is a super awesome overview. Thank you. Ron, we'll go ahead and hop over to you to tell us a little bit more about CAD learning and how you've been using that for um, remote learning engagement. Actually very similar to Mark. Uh, we went out the same way. Uh, our school is set up in a hybrid system this year um, where half the kids are in, half the kids are out. Um, we do a Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then all the kids are virtual on Friday. And then about a month ago, we went total, um, everyone's on. So the, what I do like about the program and Mark's probably similar is our one-to-one -one time and our, our individual instruction time is very limited because I have half my class in a Zoom. Half the time. Or, right, in, in Google Meet um, because we use Classroom also. And then half the class is in, in class. So you're trying to keep both of them moving at the same time. Um, I utilize the program the same way. Um, we have videos. The, the worksheets, textbook, everything that I was using last year, I continue to use with CAD learning. Um, I use the videos to supplement what I was already doing. So Mark has a textbook. 
Um, he works through the textbook. Um, I just continue to, to use it and supplement the videos through CAD Learning to what we're doing. So then um, some students are very good at being home and being self-motivated and um, some other students, not so much. So the, the kids that are, I don't hold them back. So they, they can run through the videos. It's a um, self-tutorial, they'll move. So I set up a base standard that this is what needs to be covered this marking period or this week. And then if they do anything beyond that, um, because we have, we have an in-house STEM program. Um, as I start, I actually teach a mechanical drawing class also, which is a pencil paper. But once we get through the holidays, then I introduce them to CAD. And I kind of let them start navigating CAD on their own. If they run into a problem and I'm busy or I'm trying to remotely teach, um, they can search, they can find a video um, themselves and, um, and continue moving forward that way. Awesome. Ron, are you able to log in as well and give us a little peek into the, the CAD learning platform? I can. Um, and I have, and I'm not going to leave. Did that come up? I don't think it came yep, up. Yep, I can see it. Okay. Um, I do have students' names also. What I do like is that any given time I can go in and I can take a look at a transcript and, and I created the playlist. So if I decide on a playlist and I'm working in CAD, in order to start when I move from mechanical drawing into CAD, I can give them your basic controls. Um, we're gonna work with grips or we're gonna bring objects in or just understanding the drawing grid. So I can set that up and I can create a playlist. So I establish what videos they need. At the end of that, CAD Learning automatically sets an assessment for them. They take the assessment, you have to pass it with 100. Um, anything that you miss, CAD Learning will actually repopulate videos um, directly related to the question that you missed. Awesome. Uh, so if we go down through, um, there's a gap uh, I don't know if this one, but there's a, a gap playlist that'll come up. And that's just um, from what I established to what the end result is and, and what they had gotten wrong. Um, but they'll work through their system. I can see it. What the students would actually see um, would be more uh, of this screen. So mm -hmm. they introduce the gra drawing grid. They can work through the videos and each section will have its own videos. Once you build on a badge, then, um, then you can move, they call them medallions. Um, then you actually complete that section and then you would move to the next, the next group. Right. And you right. can establish whether they wanna be a, a user or they want to go for a professional cert. Um, right now, obviously, they're in the user mode, <laughs> and they're and they're uh, they're working through it that way. Awesome. So I'll I'll stay with you, Ron. Just asking kind of a follow up question. What of this platform has been one of your favorite features? What do you find to be most helpful as a teacher? Um, I think actually with. COVID and being quarantined and students being at home, um, it allowed a seamless teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we have uh, Autodesk license. Autodesk allows all the students to download free for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and we happen to be fortunate that our laptops can actually hold their software program. Mm -hmm. So when a student goes home, they'll download CAD or I have CAD, Revit, and Inventor, um, and they can download one of those. Um, so they'll continue to work at home. We have been um, playing around a little bit with how they submit. They can submit through Classroom, and but it creates a lot of time on our end just trying to download 
Um, and so view right everything. Now, yeah. Yeah. So right now when they come into to school, the two days that they're in, um, I just have them drop it in my Dropbox and I return it through a shared folder in Google. Um, wow. And that seems to be working pretty well right now. Perfect. Mark, did you have any thoughts on um, Teach Me 3D? Any features that you find to be most engaging? I mean, it could be right now or just in general. Yeah, um, I just like the way that he's got um, the, the videos set up. They're like relatively short. So like a teenager's attention span, it like fits perfectly. Um, I also like the fact that I, ha I teach a variety of classes. Um, one of them is in vendor heavy. So I'll like, I, I enjoy teaching inventor. So I'll, I'll teach the kids, you know, the concepts, but like I said, if a kid's absent, he can go to the, the video and watch it. But I also have other classes where inventors, not like the main software. Mm -hmm. And I might have a student come in who had me before and is an inventor wizard, but the kids sitting next to them never saw it before in their life. And so for me to move the class forward through the curriculum, you know, I don't want to stop and reteach the master inventor kid uh, while I'm teaching the novice. So the novice can go through the Teach Me 3D, maybe at home, a little bit at their own pace, learning those concepts while we're kind of going through the curriculum together as well. So it's, it's really fantastic that way. Yeah, the flexibility, I feel like, especially during a phase like this is super important. So that's really nice. Do you find that there's a feature that you wish the platform had that doesn't, or what's something that you feel like is missing? Um, maybe just like the, the feedback aspect, because like Ron was saying, his, it looks like his program, like generating those uh, like missing concepts for a kid to go over again, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then maybe some kind of a, again, just being a lazy guy, so if I didn't have the grade those yes. <laughs> uh, worksheets if there's something that I could plug in and just automatically be graded that's really the only thing though and that's you know everything else I find is a, a really huge positive it's just like I guess on my end if I have to do more work um just with all the I other stuff all that's teachers going on can agree with yeah. that no that's something <laughs> yeah. that we'd all appreciate right yeah, yeah when it comes to grading I really kind of <laughs> slow down on stuff but um everything else I couldn't say enough of awesome Ron, what about you? Is there anything you feel like on the um, on the CAD learning side that you feel like is missing? No, I I think probably it would be a blend be, between what both of us have. Um, I like the idea that they actually have a textbook at home because right now I'm I'm creating that, so I'll, I'll scan in. Um, the advantage is I'll scan in and I'll only give them the information that I really want them working on right now. If they had the entire textbook, um, sometimes they start working ahead, but they really don't have the foundation mm -hmm. to work ahead and, and they create some bad habits that are a little bit harder to break later. Uh, but it, I like the idea of the, of the textbook. I didn't go that direction because with the courses that I teach and the kids that I have, I, I kind of like the idea that I could freelance and I could change direction with yeah. individual students when they came in. Um, but having that for the newer students would be an advantage. So Ron, to that point, and I've seen a little bit of the platform before, but I'd love for you to show um, our attendees today a little bit about what it looks like to create a playlist because I think being able to customize that content for your students is a great feature. So would you be able to show us a little bit about what that looks like, how simple it is? Yep. I can, my screen switched from, it switched to a launch meeting. So I don't know if it's gonna take me out of our meeting now, because I've lost all my controls. I can see you. Do you need, well, let's give you a second to figure that out. And Mark, if we could pass it over to you so that you can share your screen and show us a little bit about how you customize the content for different learning levels or what that looks like from a customization standpoint. Yeah, actually, um, I don't customize it all that much at all. Um, and I can show you here.
Um, so for example, in the uh, high school teacher resources, um, I'll just show you, if it's downloads quick enough here, what the students get. And so um, I'll just have the students, you know, complete uh, an activity or two. So it's, it's in a PDF and this is where, again, if I had my druthers, this would be kind of more electronic. Um, I'll just scroll down. They do have a student checklist that they can kind of mark off what they've done, a little table of contents. And then here would be an example of one of the lessons. Um, and again, I might just to say, for, as far as customization, I just may go, you know, fill out the lecture sheets, um, do the demonstration activity, but skip the, the final activity, yeah. that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, and so I'll just have my students, um, if, I were, if they were with me, I would give them this packet, you know, to take home to work on. Uh, right now, with, if we were shut down like we are, I would just have the kids write down their answers on a sheet and I have them submit everything to Canvas. Um, same thing with their inventor models. I'll have them set up a drawing file with some specific dimensions on their parts. And then they just PDF that to me in Canvas and it's really slick to grade and that kind of stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I think, I mean, I agree that to your point, it would probably be a lot easier if it were automated, but to the same point, I think it also is helpful, um, especially during times like this, where you don't know the technology that students have access to at home to be able to do something like this in a PDF that's fairly simple, right, from a technological perspective. Right, because I mean, we can't even assume that a student's going to have a printer at home, yeah. you know, or anything. So, yeah. um, just looking at some chat window stuff, if you don't mind. Uh, no, go for it. If you see some questions come up that you yeah. want, feel free. So our, our students have Chromebooks, which I, you know, are, to me they're useless for what I do in class. Um, our IT folks have set up this remote desktop thing. I couldn't tell you how they did it, um, but essentially they can look through their Chromebook. They log on uh, to class link and they've set up this icon where they can go into my classroom essentially and choose one of the desktops to work on. So they have access to all the, the programs that I have in the desktops. I think there's some software out there that your school can buy in order for students to do that, but I don't know, you know, the ins and outs of that. And then I just, I've seen a couple of them. Yes, this, the Teach Me 3D stuff, and it sounds like the CAD uh, that Ron uses it does move them towards the certification. So um, that's the nice thing is if, I feel if a student watched the entire Teach Me 3D videos, answered the questions, they'd have an awesome shot at passing those certification tests, which we do give here in Oconomowoc. Yeah, so just to speak a little bit more to that um, for our attendees that have asked that question is the these learning products are set up to be mapped to match the objective domains of our certification exams. And so when students are going through these courses, they're learning the different tasks. Usually like Mark has shown, it's broken down by chapter and that chapter is associated with a specific um, objective domain on the certification exam. So if your students are doing really well and like Ron has said, establishing like 100% on some of these assignments, they have a really great shot going into the certification itself. And it looks like we've lost Ron. So Mark, you're just in the hot seat for the next little bit, if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, I wanted to ask what features you think of your learning product or what type of advice you have for new teachers who are teaching the subject maybe for the first time. What about um, Teach Me 3D you think would be helpful for them? Well, <clears throat> I do some training in the summer where I teach other high school teachers for a subject. Well, you are the perfect person to answer this. Yeah. And so we'll go through some things with Inventor. And, you know, some people have zero background in uh, the technical fields, which is fine. Um, so they're seeing this for the very first time. Maybe they don't even use computers a whole lot. And so we'll go through our thing, but I always reinforce like, hey, if you're not comfortable with what we're doing after these uh, training sessions, go to this Teach Me 3D and I'll just say, you know, there's a nominal fee, but it's totally worth the money um, because it's not only it's great for students, but if you're brand new to the software, it's perfect for adults as well. Um, you know, maybe you're just watching the videos, you're following along with the demonstration videos while you're working in Inventor and that kind of thing. 
Um, this is always my go-to site for adults because, you know, I, I learn okay through a textbook, but to have a video and it's tailored perfectly to what we may do in high school with our students, um, this is awesome for adults as well. Yeah, I think that that's one of the crucial points is that a lot of our teachers may be teaching this type of thing for the first time. And even Ron is an example of that, right? That he started teaching Adobe and then was transitioned. And look, he just joined us again. Um, transitioned to teaching Autodesk. And so going through the curriculum on your own is also very helpful for that. Ron, we're glad to have you back. Do you want to pull yourself off mute? <laughs> I had to mute myself because I wasn't happy with what I was saying. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to put out there what I was saying. Um. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you back. We were just going through um, a few things on the Teach Me 3D side. So, if you could show us, are you able to share your screen, Ron? Yep. Awesome. So we'll dive back into CAD learning a little bit to see what it's like to create a playlist. Okay, you're going to have to customize that curriculum. You're going to have to open to allow me to share my screen? Uh, let me see. Yes, here we go. All right, are you good? Yes. Okay, perfect. And I love seeing all these questions come through in the chat. So we'll make sure to answer those. If we haven't answered them all by the end, we'll make sure to just go through those during our Q&A section. Okay, looks great, Ron. I can see your screen now. Okay, in in the playlist, I can choose, I can create a new playlist. Once I do that, I can name it whatever I want to name. I create it. Then I can actually go through my library. And I'll see if it Maybe it's not going to let me do it. I think, Ron, if you go up to the library section as well, I may let you do it from there. Um, that's normally through the. Yeah, it looks like that link for whatever reason is is not, not working. Yeah, it's not but working. If you just want to talk through the steps. That's completely fine as well. So no, normally you would pull up. Um, you can set up your test. Um, in this case, I would I had. I'll just go back to I'll see what's open getting started. If I want my whole set, which would be all of these videos, which as a student, if I open this up and I saw all these videos, it would a little bit I of would a probably want to drop the class. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I did, I went through and I chose the things were that were pertinent to what we were doing in class and what drawings um, they would have coming up this week. And I can check anything that's that's green checked has been placed in my playlist. Awesome. So it'll go, I can set my playlist. And what I did was I established a 1.0, 1.1, 1 1.2. Um, and then when they finish, in this case, it's just a grid and how really to get started in workspaces. Um, but if we're working on grips, if we're working on straight line drawings, um, or angled, or I went to an ortho, um, ortho views, then I would link those videos, I'd finish that playlist, and then I would have a series of drawings that related directly to that set of videos. So they need to finish the assessment first, um, and then we, we work through whether, if they're at home, we'll do it through Meet. 
if they're in class than on the whiteboard. So both sets of students are looking at the same, the same thing. If they're if they're viewing my screen, they're viewing it from both locations. And do you typically have them watch the videos as part of class time, or are those assigned um, as like homework, as something they do on their own time? They do that on their own time. When they're in class, I I, I want them working on their drawings because that's when they're going to have the most questions. Yep. So as they have the questions, I can answer. Um, some of the students will share, they can share their screen with me if they're home. Um, but because we see them every other day, if, if it's not a Friday, we usually wait till the next day. Yeah. Um, just because I don't, I don't want to open all those controls up sure. and I'm not quite sure what we're going to see at home. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Can you actually do me a favor and click the share underneath one of your playlists so that, um, we can see what that looks like. Is it a link that comes through or how, how are you able to share that? So what I do, it works. Uh, similar when I set up CAD learning in the very beginning, um, I enter in a, a spreadsheet, I enter all the emails and then I upload. Awesome. And that's, that's what creates my user profiles. Once I have that, then I can go through and choose students. I just drop them in by their email. So I have an email list for, um, CAD. I have an email list for, um, and I didn't show that prior, um, when I go to any of my users, um, I'll take one that's inactive. I can group them. So if this student was grouped in the honors, then he would have access to everything that we're working on at that time. Mm -hmm. Or because we have all the auto desk, I could open up any oh, of the auto course. desk products. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if he's using Fusion or CAD architecture or whatever he happened to be working on at the time or a student that's going to civil. So I would put him in a group um, and that's that's how I separate them out as far as the users. Well, and it helps you for reporting as well, right? To have them grouped by by classes so that you can see a little bit about, it's not everyone all at once, right? You can see your classes um, individually. I can see, I can see classes individually, um, but mine, the way I have it set up right now, I see them because I actually have one class period during the day that overlaps. Gotcha. Um, so I have a CAD student, I have four STEM students and a CAD honor student all in the same class. So, so <laughs> they were just kind of in. Yeah. And then, and actually having the videos, that's where the saving grace comes in. Yeah. We log in um, when they're at home. Um, I kind of go through a three pronged, okay, you're doing this and this assessment and you need to be working on this. And mm -hmm. the second group is working on that and so on and so forth. So, um, but it's been working relatively well. The students seem to like it so far, so. Good. Well, I'll ask you the same question I asked Mark while we had you dropped for just a second. Um, what about this is helpful to you as a teacher who's maybe teaching this for the first time? I mean, I know you're you're into the swing of things for a couple of years now, but what about CAD learning was helpful as you were transitioning from teaching Adobe to teaching Autodesk? That was, it was a godsend then because when I started, um, like, and that's what I was saying when we first opened up about relating to first year teachers. I was trying to learn CAD and Inventor and Revit all at the same time and stay 24 hours ahead of my students. Yeah. Which is not an easy task. That super feasible, but we have, you for, for managing that. Right. My youngest, my middle and youngest daughter was, was still in college. I was still trying to follow them and I coach wrestling. So when I landed in season with that, it, um, it was not a good time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of our attendees probably really identify with what you're talking about. I know you guys. Multitasking didn't explain yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, so new teachers coming in when you feel overwhelmed. And I think uh, most of us do. And I think even teaching for a long time, I don't, I think our bags of tricks 
and we get more comfortable digging into our bag of tricks when we teach for a while. Um, I, I think we try to teach too much too fast. And they may know it, but they really don't understand it. Sure. So by having the videos, it allows them to go back and um, pick up on things that they didn't realize that they missed until they got into the middle of a, a project and it's assembly drawing and they're not understanding and and the tolerance and it won't move. And well, right, it doesn't. <laughs> so they get a chance to backtrack and um, and kind of catch up and it, it saves us as a teacher. Um, and I only caught the back half of what Mark was saying as far as um, kids that are advanced and um, we allowed our students this year to take the first marking period um, to decide whether they wanted to be home and and do a virtual learning or they were actually going to come in person for for the two days a week. Well, we just finished our first quarter. Mm. Well, we went through a whole quarter of work. Now I have kids that are coming back from cyber and they haven't had, they weren't even on my roster. So to try to get them caught up from week one when we're on week 11. That's tough. Yeah, well, there's a lot of content. That's not, and it's, I mean, it's pretty hard for them. I don't know if it's really fair for them to be caught that far behind. Um, in the environment that we're teaching in this year, we don't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time to begin with. Yeah. So we, we essentially took three days of in-class work away from them. Yeah. So um, it's, it's a big ask for everyone. the students too. Yeah. Yeah. It's challenging for everyone. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for, for all of your thoughts. We have quite a few questions that have come through. So I want to make sure we have time to go through those. So one of our questions from David is um, for both of you. What CAD programs are you using? Are you using Fusion 360 or are there other programs that you teach as well? I can jump in. Um, we've decided to stay with Inventor even though Fusion 360 is kind of coming on um, just because around us, industry is using Inventor over you know Fusion 360. And then we use Revit uh, for our civil engineering architecture class. Ron, what about you? Yep, we are, we're doing the same and for the same reasons we stayed in Venter, um, for Revit for our architecture and then I use um, AutoCAD. Okay, yeah, so I think one of the great things about both of the programs that you guys use in your classroom is that it works for multiple Autodesk certifications. So if you're using um, AutoCAD or if you're using Inventor, there's, there's content like Ron, you showed in the library for for multiple certification exams and multiple programs. So that's super helpful. Um, another question is what about knowledge in geometry? How much do you feel like you need to know to be able to utilize these programs? I would say minimal. I mean, as long as you know some basic terms like what does tangent mean? You know, what is, what's horizontal, what's vertical, maybe concentric. I mean, it's very minimal and uh, what's nice is that it, you know, the program itself has like little screenshots, little mini movies when you hover over tools. So like the programs that Ron and I are using, I mean, they can see how it's done in like the Teach Me 3D movies and that kind of stuff. And then they go to the program. Well, they're like, oh, what was he talking about again? And so they can just hover over something and it shows a little example. So, I mean, if you didn't know what tangent was, it kind of spells it out for you, that kind of stuff. So I'd say minimal. Awesome. Ron, yeah. I don't know if yours is any different. No, I, I agree. Um, actually, when we switched from mechanical drawing to CAD, um, I don't think the kids are real happy with me because it, it makes life so much easier. Yeah. Um, things that they had to do on, on paper, now it's essentially- it's automated for them, yeah. They understand plotting points and X, Y, and Z, and, the rest You're of it. Good start. <laughs> yep. Okay. Awesome. Another question that came in: Do either of you use Solid Professor, and how are these tools different? I don't know if you're familiar. I with do them. not. Okay, Mark. I'm aware of Solid Professor. Um, 
I looked at it and I didn't really care for it just because um, like, I like the way the Teach Me 3 website is organized as far as what a student is going to use. Um, you know, again, approaching this from a high school student's perspective, we're only going to do like maybe even 20% of the software. I mean, there's so many things, so many tools, and it can't get overwhelming. Well, the Teach Me 3D website just nicely, concisely talks about the things that we'll use on a daily basis. And I just found Solid Professor was kind of like all over the place. It was difficult for me to find what I was looking for and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a program that I'm not super familiar with. So it's good to know kind of how those compare across across other programs. Um, so this is a question I think, Mark, we already touched on this a little bit. Um, how did you get students access to Autodesk to be able to remote in? Is there advice that you have on working with your IT team to be able to set something like that up as we're going into the testing heavy season of the semester? Yeah. Um... I would just approach your IT folks and say, I know this can be done. Other school districts are doing it. Um, it's the whole, the process itself of logging on and using the software, um, like getting to the software is pretty simple. And then, you know, understandably because they're at home remotely networking into our desktops, it's slightly laggy. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, you gotta be patient, but I mean, we've been able to get through a lot more in the last couple of weeks than we did with the shutdown last spring. Um, so again, I couldn't tell you the ins and outs, the nuts and bolts of how to set up the remote That's access. A different webinar, I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah, but, it, <laughs> but it's a godsend though, it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely think that's something that a lot of our teachers are struggling with. So as a CERT support team, we'll work to be able to um, kind of outline some of those solutions that different teachers have been using, because I think that's something that would be really helpful. Um, my last piece of um, just questioning for you guys is what advice do you have for teachers shopping around for curriculum and learning products? What are some things that they should look for? I think that's personal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, not that you won't want to tell anyone, but I think it has to match your teaching style. Yeah. And, and what do you want as an end result in what you're doing? Um, and Heading back to the last question a little bit, um, we're actually in the middle of that now. Our My IT department, um, they're setting up a remote server because we're using Chromebooks also. Yeah. Um, we used it. We played around. There's, some, there's a couple companies out there. Um, it's expensive, very expensive. Yeah. Um, so we're, as of right now, you they can download whatever software programs we're using in Autodesk and they can log in and use it directly through our server here in a, with a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. So Mark's right, it can be done. Um, the specifics of it, I don't know, but when they turn it on and they're happy and the students are doing it, I'm happy. So I don't, I don't argue you with that. Don't too much into that <laughs> as long as there's someone that can set it up for you, right? <laughs> right. But it, as far as material, I don't, I like to try it. Um, my textbooks, I went to SDC and I use Redshelf. So they're at home. I don't have to worry about, they're not, we don't want to share things. We don't want to touch things. We want to clean things and you're not going to clean the textbook. <laughs> so, um, so we, we went, I went that route. And in my case, I just asked for a copy and I see if it matches what I'm doing. So you, you kind of can test run it. Mm -hmm. before you dive into it. I don't know how Mark handles that, but. Well, uh, just like going back to your original question, um, I would just say, as far as shopping around for these types of programs, um, the Teach Me 3D website, at least, it was made by a former teacher who taught Inventor. So he stylized his videos and training as if a high school kid was um, you know watching the videos where like that solid professor really isn't set up that way, so it's funny because you know I just showed my students today his video on common mistakes, and you know my students do the same exact mistakes, and you know it's frustrating. So I'm like, oh, it's time I got to show them this video, 
And so that's the really, that's the draw for me is it's made by a teacher who's been in our situation, you know, was frustrated with some things, decided to come up with this uh, website and it's just been fantastic. Awesome. I love that. And just so that all of our attendees are aware, these are two options that are great, but we of course have a whole host of learning programs that um, prepare students for the Autodesk certified user exams. So as both Mark and Ron have mentioned, figure out what works for you. There's plenty of options out there um, and make sure that you request with our um, CertiPort representatives a demo so that you're able to access the program, see a little bit about what it looks like before you dive in. Thank you both so much for your time today. We're so grateful for all that you guys are doing. We know that you have a lot on your plates and we're just so happy that you're able to, to spend time with us this afternoon. If yeah, there's any pleasure. questions, um, you're more than welcome to contact me or April. I will drop um, my email into the chat and we will um, be happy to connect with you. We'll also be sending out the recording for this presentation through email so that if you have a colleague that needs to be able to see this information or maybe the principal at your school so that they can get a feel for what you guys are requesting, um, you're more than welcome to show them this. But again, thank you, Mark, Ron, for all of your expertise. We're so grateful to be able to spend a little bit of the afternoon with you. Right, thank thank you. you. Awesome, have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone. You too, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.